main thing is that sauna frequency is inversely associated with the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease, which means that if you have more saunas, you have lower risk. Human OS. Learn. Master. Achieve. Professor Yari Dukanen, welcome to Human OS Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me about where you work and the type of research you do. I'm working at hospital as a cardiologist. Uh, basically, I am focused on invasive cardiology in hospital work, but my research work is more focused on epidemiological studies. And you recently published a study in the December issue of the journal Age and Aging looking at sauna usage and risk for dementia. And before we discuss that study, tell me about some of the prior research that made you interested to explore this area. We have done quite a lot of previous studies on cardiovascular risk factors. My research has focused more on benefits of exercise in cardiovascular risk prevention. So then I have been also always interested about the various lifestyle factors, including also dietary factors, physical activity, and sauna is also closely related to physical activity habits in here in Finland. So we are more and more interested about the sauna and how sauna may protect against the cardiovascular disease and what is the role of sauna in prevention. So this is basically my background research before that sauna studies. Great. Well, let's discuss your current study. How is it conducted? Yes, this is a population-based study. The study was originally designed to investigate risk factors for cardiovascular outcomes in middle-aged men from eastern Finland. And in this study, we included middle-aged men aged from 42 to 60 years. And in this study, we had a sample of men with uh, complete data on assessment on sauna bathing habits and then assessment on baseline characteristics like smoking, alcohol consumption, blood pressure, and many other risk factors. And finally, we also assessed all dementia and Alzheimer's disease cases that occurred during the long-term follow-up since uh, baseline study. Mm. So we have a complete information on sauna bathing habits among 2,300 men in this study. And what length of period do you have information on this population? We have quite long follow-up. This study was started already in late 80s and baseline study collection conducted in the beginning of 90s. And then we have followed with respect to these outcomes every year. Actually, we have annually assessed all outcomes occurred during the follow-up. So now we have a total of 20 years of follow-up with all these main outcomes, including memory diseases and also cardiovascular disease outcomes. So the study was originally set up to look at aspects of heart disease in over 2,000 men. It's been going on for 20 years. You follow up every year to check in on some aspects of interest related to health. Tell me about the length of time that this population spent in a sauna. So what's typical for an average session for a Finnish man to be in a sauna? In this study, an average time in sauna was 15 minutes. Mm Mm-hmm. Accurate mean time, standard deviation, seven minutes. So the range in sauna room was quite wide. It is actually from two minutes up to 90 minutes. Mm. So there's a lot of variation among this population. And regarding to frequency, we assessed, of course, frequency of sauna per per week. Mm -hmm. And mean frequency was around 2.1, so basically two to three times per week is quite normal way to use sauna in Finland. But there were some who are using it more than four times per week, even seven times per week, using it every day, practically. And how hot are these saunas? They are quite hot. They are dry saunas, and our age temperature is around 80 degrees. Sometimes it can be even 90 to 100 degrees even in Celsius, and the lowest level was around 60 degrees. But an average, as I said, is 80. It is common that it is around that. 
Yeah, and to translate that for people who use Fahrenheit, that's a temperature of 176 to about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So really hot. Yeah, it is really hot. But I think it's not so bad. It's quite easy to stay there. It is not too hot. It is dry and humidity is good. And yeah, I think it's possible to stay there. And sometimes humidity may temporarily increase because people throw water on the rocks. Traditional Finnish sauna, the humidity is around 10 to 20 percent. So big range in terms of how long people spent in the sauna. You also looked at the frequency that this population would take a sauna. Tell me about your findings. The main thing is that sauna frequency is inversely associated with the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease, which means that if you have more saunas, you have a lower risk of these diseases. Yeah. There was already some risk reduction among those men who had two to three times of sauna per week, but the highest risk reduction, which is over 60%, was among those who had four to seven times sauna per week, and they had the highest risk reduction. The results didn't change, although we adjusted for factors like age, their body mass index, their systolic blood pressure, lipids, smoking, alcohol use, and previous diseases like diabetes or heart diseases and still there was uh, similar findings and uh, they didn't change and the risk reduction was very significant. There seemed to be a dose response relationship, so more reduction with more exposure to sauna. You can wonder why we didn't have a group without sauna. Mm -hmm. Especially in Finland, it is very, very uncommon that people don't use sauna at all. Mm. So we had only 12 men in this large population who were not using sound at all. So in the lights of statistical analysis, it is impossible to include so small group as a reference. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, this is the reason that we have a... Really a part of the culture, yeah. Wow, so aside from this really impressive reduction in dementia... What were some of the other health benefits that you found from sauna usage that you and even had reported previously? Yes, in our previous study, we focused more on cardiovascular outcomes and we studied how sauna frequency and duration were associated with cardiovascular outcomes. These outcomes included sudden cardiac death, fatal coronary heart disease death, fatal cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality also. And in this study, we also had uh, quite consistent results compared to our dementia study. We found that the risk of uh, sudden cardiac death and fatal cardiovascular events was uh, significantly decreased among men who had a sauna more than four times per week. And there was also very clear risk reduction. Mm. And we found that those men who had a sauna session longer than 19 minutes, mm -hmm. so meaning 20 minutes or more, so they had also decreased risk of uh, sudden cardiac death and fatal cardiovascular events. And there was a similar dose response relationship between the duration of a single sauna session and fatal cardiovascular events. Did you look at the relationship between exposure time in the sauna and also dementia? In this recent study, we haven't looked at it yet, but we are going to study how the single session may have effect on the results so with respect to memory diseases as well. well. Our main focus has been the frequency of sauna because the duration may vary also very much and frequency is a very reliable measure for the exposure of sauna. It is even more reliable than the yeah. sauna session and it's also average of week of a duration of single sauna session yeah. and so right. frequency is very accurate compared to duration of single sauna session. Yeah, that makes sense. So while you were looking at associations here, can you speculate on some of the potential mechanisms for these benefits? Because clearly we're seeing benefits in cardiovascular health and also in brain health. And of course, those two are related. But what do you think are some of the reasons why these benefits are occurring? This is a very interesting area, and still we have to speculate a bit. But of course, we know that during the sauna, heart rate increases. Heart rate increase can be comparable with uh, at least low 
or moderate level of exercise. So there are effects on cardiovascular system during the hot sauna. Of course, during the sauna, there is no muscle work like during the exercise. This is one issue that heart rate is increased and also circulatory function is changed during the hot sauna session is one aspect. Mm -hmm. And then there may be also some positive effects on vascular function. Nowadays, there are some previous studies which have shown that during the warm sauna, there are improvement in vascular endothelial function. Endothelium is a inner wall in the vessels and it is improved during the sauna, which may be connected to blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And this way we can understand that systemic blood pressure may be lower immediately after the sauna and during the repeated sauna it may have a positive effects, lowering effects on sa uh, blood pressure. Interesting. Yeah. And there are some evidence that sauna may have some positive effects on autonomic nervous system. So it is closely related to body relaxation and maybe heart function or heart arrhythmias and uh, this may be one thing also explaining these findings but these are speculative as I mentioned. Mm. Then last but not least I think uh, it's that sauna is also the habit that is considered to be very relaxing. Yeah, It may be one possible mechanism which may explain our findings, but of course we need much more studies showing these possible mechanisms and confirm these findings. Yeah, I'm also interested in how heat exposure can stimulate heat shock proteins and the myriad benefits that that seems to have. And just for our listeners, heat shock proteins are a large family of proteins and they aid in the cell's response to acute stress. And a lot of different types of stressors can induce them. So for example, in Ramadan fasting, you see the levels of heat shock proteins rise across the Ramadan period. The higher the amount of heat shock proteins in serum associate with lower cardiovascular disease risk. And one other thing that I found really interesting is a friend of mine, Paul Shaw, who does fruit fly research in St. Louis, he's a sleep researcher, but what he found is that the activity of certain heat shock proteins was under the control of different circadian controlled genes. And when he knocked out those genes, then it produced less heat shock protein 83. And that made the flies much more intolerant of sleep deprivation. So that to me is very interesting. I always get a lot of questions about, is there anything I can do to get less sleep? I never would encourage people to try to get less sleep. It's possible that regular sauna could make people more resistant to the effects of sleep loss so that it won't have as much of a negative toll on them the following day. Yes, thank you about this comment. It's very interesting also to study heat of proteins. And then another issue is really the sleeping quality. I think Finnish people have uh, experienced that when we normally go to sauna in the evening and after sauna bathing in the next night, we have a better quality of sleep. Mm. My friends, my parents and many people have said that uh, after sauna, the quality of sleeping is better than without sauna. Yeah, that's another effect on sleep. So not only making you more resistant potentially to the effects of sleep loss, it also might enhance the depth of sleep. And we know that a drop in core body temperature is important for the initiation of sleep. And then across the night, body temperature continues to drop and that is associated with the depth of sleep. So sleep might become more efficient yeah. by sauna usage in the evening. Yeah, it can be that it is fun. interesting, interesting. Yeah, very. So then this study focused on men. Do you have plans to do more work in the subject, and including assessment of the effects of sauna on women? Culturally, do women sauna as much as men do? Yes, in Pilot, yeah. Both are doing it similar way. Mm. I think there are big differences to use of sauna among men and female. And it is very common in Finland that families are using the sauna because almost every family has their own sauna. It is so common here. Mm. And there are not big differences between women and men about the, using the sauna. Mm. And uh, of course, we are interested and we should study also how the sauna may be work and how it's related to outcomes among women. And uh, it could be possible to study in our further study settings. And secondly, we are going to investigate some physiological changes in a smaller population 
assessing these parameters before and after sauna among both genders. And so we can see if the changes during the sauna session are similar or are they different between women and men. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear more work will be done here. Yeah. It seems like at this point, with the signs we have, a pretty clear opportunity to improve health from a variety of aspects in people, but obviously more work is needed. Is it a part of the culture to do some cold exposure, like a cold plunge, as a part of the sauna ritual in various cultures around the world? If you do sauna, you also will go into a cold pool. Is that a part of the culture in Finland? Yeah, it is part of culture, but there are people who like it and there are also people who don't use it. So there are different kind of sauna users, but some likes to go also in during the winter, they like to use sauna and then they go even the snow or even the water mm -hmm. and then they go back to sauna and they can do it once or two or three times. Yeah. But I think still that it is minor part of our sauna culture compared to common use of sauna, which is without this very cold exposure between the sauna sessions. Yeah, interesting. I know I'd, I'd like to see if there's additional benefit to exposing yourself to stress on the other end of the heat spectrum. Yeah, yeah. And my suspicion is that there might be. Yeah, it might be. By the way, since saunas seem to have effect not dissimilar in some ways to exercise, were you able to look at whether there was an additional benefit to sauna exposure to cardiovascular conditioning, whatever sort of physical training people were doing? Yes, this would be a part of our future project. Yeah, great. because commonly we do exercise firstly and then we go to sauna. It is very common habit here. In our population-based study, it is not possible to investigate so this kind of details if they had exercise before and then they immediately go to the sauna but uh, in our analysis we take into account in general physical activity habits and still it seems that sauna had an independent role independent association with outcomes mm. that is what we can say on the basis of our epidemiological study but of course in future in experimental studies it could be very valuable to study if there is additional benefits if you combine both physical activity or exercise session with sauna. And last question, when do people sauna in Finland? Is it typically after exercise, morning, evening, or is it really just spread any time throughout the day? I think that it's part of the evening. Mm. We like to use more it during the evening, but some people mm. like also go in the morning. Yeah, there are different yeah. kind of people. So it depends. How do you feel? How it's better? Because I know also some guys who like to start their day by going to sound and then they are fresh, go to work. Yeah. And uh, secondly, I think it's quite common that people do some exercise before mm -hmm. and half an hour, one hour, or they go gym. And after this, they had a ready sauna and then they go sauna and they feel very good after that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. It's good. Professor Yari Lakanen, I really appreciate you coming onto the show. I have to admit, I think this is one of the most interesting studies in health application science that came out last year. And I'm sure that all of our listeners are going to be more interested in using the sauna at their local gym at this point. So yeah. thank you for the work that you've done. And thank you for continuing to do work in this area. I really look forward to hearing what you find next. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening and come visit us soon at humanos.me.